Hey guys, welcome to episode number one of the Urban Design on City Skyline series. So as you may be aware or have seen my previous episode which introduces um, the new series, uh, this is going to be the series where I'm not working on an entire city uh, to cover off the entire map, but more based on smaller cities within a larger region. Um, so the region is called Eshternach after the capital city that is going to be in this region. Now the inspiration has come from uh, my recent uh, Christmas holiday trip to Europe where I spent some time in Luxembourg to see uh, some of my uh, in-laws um, uh, relatives. So it definitely gave me a bit of inspiration to create a European themed map slash city I guess. Something that I've realized on YouTube is really lacking in this department um, is the European themed uh, housing or the European themed uh, cities being built. And I can see why because it's actually not very easy. It definitely does take a bit of, uh, well, different take on the way you need to essentially, I guess, uh, allocate things like housing and shops and all that. Uh, than what you would normally do in, an, in a Western uh, uh, society such as um, uh, America or Australia where all the buildings are more modern and there's none of that real old uh, heritage of buildings being several hundreds of years old um, that have you know gone through wars and and then been restored and all that so it's definitely a new take on this series, something that I'm very uncomfortable with, uh, but hopefully you guys uh, will kind of agree that this is going to be a good series, something fresh, something that hasn't been done before, really, in all honesty. Um, so yeah, one thing that with this series you'll see is that I'm not going to be using any zonable zones. Well, at this stage, that's as far as I'm aware, how I'm going to be taking this series is um, none of the zonable uh, buildings will be placed. It's all going to be placed by Rico, uh, the Rico mod. Uh, so something that I've done is I've actually found some uh, custom assets such as you know European style themed houses and buildings and shops and added them into the collection and started placing them as Rico, of course, with slightly altered numbers so that the buildings are actually, you know, you've got a corner building that actually contains like, uh, instead of containing five people that live in a building that should normally contain 30, the building will now contain 30. So slightly playing around also with like a realistic population uh, style, I guess. Um, I'm also incorporating my good old tricks of... Uh, incorporating the no despawn mod for the traffic so I can really you know challenge myself while at this of dealing with traffic and something that you may see now that I've been doing over the last couple of minutes is um, working on my highway so something unlike Sant'Arcangelo and uh, Verrucchio is that I'm working on now trying to make the highways more realistic where in Europe it's naturally right-hand drive. Um, and so right-hand being the slow lane would be also the exit lane. Um, now, in order to um, manage traffic in uh, the previous cities that I created, I was using this technique that I like to call... Uh, um, uh, God, I even don't know what I used to call this technique. It's been such a, such a long time since I've, you know, uh, fully... Uh, fully fledged played this game outright um 
So it's called the ramp filtering system, that's it. So I used to filter the highways um, using a ramps. So if you needed to turn one way or another, the specific ramps will appear on one side or the other side. So, um, and that was causing my cities to get full utilization of all the lanes on highways where people would be saying, you know, uh, I'm only getting all my cars using one lane instead of all lanes. And how do you do that? So uh, I'm going to be returning to the classic style of actually just Try to be as realistic as possible. Now, what you're currently seeing on the screen as well is uh, me placing some props, road props such as um, guardrails on the on the highways, some little sticks with highlighters on them. So at night, when I uh, was not highlighters, but with the reflectors, so when driving at night, they kind of um, show off for the drivers where they are. And in addition to that. Uh, just putting up some random signs like pedestrian crossing coming up, roundabout cr uh, roundabouts coming up, give way, no entry signs and all that. So definitely trying to take my detailing to, an, to the next level, um, something that I've really never pushed in this direction purely on the basis that this kind of designing work takes a very long time. Like, for example, placing an individual building, yeah, does that look right or not? It will take me sometimes even five minutes and I'm sure that's something that you guys do not want to uh, watch me deciding or not <laughs> if that building should be placed there or not over the span of five minutes and then we'll end up doing only three things in an episode. So I've incorporated a uh, this into a time lapse to show you more work that I'm able to do um, so that, I mean, it covers off kind of my ideas and how I've been managing uh, adding all these assets and other things. Now, during this series as well, I've already found out one requirement that I definitely do need in this series, and that is a couple of assets that I'm missing. One, first of all, is chevrons. Chevrons that are placed on the side of highways. Now, I know that there are currently some available out there, such as on a bend that's coming up, you need, uh, that's a right-hand corner. I need chevrons to show that, you know, this is going to be a right-hand corner coming up. Now, there are the chevrons available, but not the type that I'm after. So if anyone out there that knows how to create uh, these assets, please get in touch with me. I'm actually after a red and white chevron that's available in Austria, um, just to kind of match the theme of my city, I, I found black and white, uh, black and uh, yellow ones, but they don't match. I did find one red and white, but uh, the textures don't actually work uh, for some reason. I don't know why there's something wrong with it. So whoever can do that, that'd be absolutely awesome. Um, so what we have here is actually the city center of uh, Steinheim, which is the first city in uh, the region that I'm currently working on. Now, what I've got here is in the middle um, is the city center, <laughs> I guess uh, I should say. And um, what I'm trying to blend out with this city is have uh, a gradual kind of low density to high density to low density to no density, essentially. Like you've got your city center, your outskirts, and then your outer city areas. So that's essentially what I'm trying to uh, to develop over here and work with. And at the beginning, I was really skeptical of how this was turning out. So it looked quite barren and all the streets looked like there's not enough detail going on. I'm like, what can I do? So I just started playing around and just started adding, okay, let's just add an asset here. Let's just add an asset here and there and there. And it just started coming along I guess really nicely uh, and the more I developed the more kind of natural it started looking like things that actually belonged and uh, and yeah it just started coming together I guess that's all I can say um, so persistence definitely uh, is needed when doing this kind of work because yes at the start it can look absolutely shocking but then once you add details here details there it looks simply sensational now, one of the goals with this is also to try not just simply build this, just like I've done with my other cities, uh, 
But something that I've done with my other cities, I guess I should say, is I've also tried to make them functional. So I'm not using any mods such as Ultimate, or not Ultimate, but the RCI mod, where whatever it is, where it just gives you maximum requirements of everything. I'm actually kind of going, going to be following the actual RCI demand. So this residential is required, commercial is required, offices or industrial, whatever is required. So I'm kind of still going to be following that so that there is this um, sense of functionality um, in this region. Now, at the start though, uh, my main focus is going to be to just to simply facilitate towns and local areas just to get this map up and running a little bit. Uh, I'm not really going to be focusing on um, getting like the facilities like electronic, uh, uh, the electricity production, water production and all that. That's something that I'm going to focus on maybe a little bit later uh, just because I'm not really in the mood, I'll, I'll be honest, to, to create that right now. So uh, what I'm going to do is just dump some sort of power plant on the edge of the map and just drag out the power source and voila, we'll have that, you know, operating temporarily. So over here, this is where I was struggling to think what should I do here, you know, I kept playing around with this asset, this asset, what what asset should I put because it looks a bit scarce. So um, then I realized, you know what, we can get some decals, start placing some cracks in the concrete, some skid marks, some uh, white lines and whatnot, uh, just to really add some de extra, that extra detail into, um, uh, into the actual city and, and, and the map itself. And... Trees. I know I can be quite um, trigger happy with trees, so it's something with this series I'm going to try and focus on a little bit more control with, or yeah, not to go too crazy with it, even though I still do place quite a lot of trees. It's something I'm trying to cut down because I, I just feel that trees just add so much so much to, to a city or, or in general to, to any um, city. So I particularly like green, green cities where there's a lot of... Uh, natural beauty in it so even though it is a bit of a urban jungle let's just say so here i'm starting to work on the actual um lower density housing surrounding the main city something that i at first i thought oh my god this is going to look absolutely horrible because look how bland and boring and empty it is and some of these house or buildings do have small little backyards, but okay, I got to um, do all the fencing myself, do all the gardening and all the details to the grass and all that. And um, I was like, yeah, at the beginning it doesn't look that great. So look, I kept working with the city center. I added more detail and it turned out all right. So the same kind of strategy I performed over here. Started adding all the city, all the little buildings here and there. Just uh, thinking, look, it's going to be okay. I'll add all the detail as we get along. Just for now, place all the housing where it needs to go, and that's exactly what I did. And I'm adding all the housing. Slowly, I'll start adding all the fencing that goes around to split up people's backyards which I used a couple of methods, tried to mix and match a little bit, but predominantly I tried using the hedges because the hedges look absolutely amazing and the wooden fences look a bit boring and um, they're very thin and they're very invisible uh, from from the naked or from the naked eye, but from, from a distance they kind of disappear. So um, I have uh, focused more on the actual hedges to uh, fence our areas. Um, something that I could and would like you guys to suggest for me if possible and that is uh, give me some suggestions of things that you would find in backyards. I mean because I've got a couple of assets that I'm adding in but it's going to be uh, monotone I guess. I'm adding my swimming pools, there's a couple of different types, I'm adding my barbecues, so there's like a, a weight set which you know you can lie down on your back and push up some weights so I added a bit of that. Um, uh, we've got some car parks around as well with the uh, little bump, uh, bumps at the end of the car park so that cars don't or end up not rolling straight through the car park I guess. 
Um, so yeah, some some little ideas of what I could else could add to the gardens because I've added a couple of basic assets. Uh, I've modified a bit with the uh, with the different grass textures through the decals. Uh, in addition to that, um, I don't know what else I can possibly add. Swing sets. Um, Maybe some, oh, I've just thought of maybe some ruined cars in the backyard or something like that. Maybe there's someone has created a driveway asset or something like that. I don't know. Maybe you guys can provide me with some suggestions. And even not that, but also uh, links if you know uh, exactly what it is. So I can have a look, examine it, and chuck it into the uh, next couple of towns that will be coming up for this series because I definitely have a couple. First one is going to be right next to Steinheim and that's going to be called Kalkesbach. And then not too far from that, we're going to have uh, Saalfeld. And once we get into the actual live footage um, of me showing you uh, what's what around the map and how things are turning out, um, I'll show you exactly where those cities are or, or will be placed, I guess. So something that... I have also come up with recently as of last week I believe there was a couple of new decals that came out one that I really like and that is that there is this all uh, cliff into cliff decal so you can add a this really nice uh, deep grayish with lots of cracks in a uh, decal on the actual cliff face which I really like um, and also there's this new one with like little petals almost in like on outside of the town where the grass would not be naturally maintained like a backyard would. Um, I've got these little little petals uh, which come in different colors like pink, yellow, white and blue and I've just placed that around as well as some dirt sections underneath trees where it would not be perfect grass. So I've really tried to show a lot of attention to detail um, in all areas of the of the map, not just within the city center and on the outer side of the city, but across the entire map. So that's something that is definitely going to be a real challenge and we'll see how the computer performs. As some of you people know, I did upgrade my computer for the last Verukia series. So um, I'm running a bit of a... A decent computer now so I can actually actually increase my mod limits to quite a bit so um, and not run into any real issues so it's a good thing for all so here's that little fencing that I was mentioning just before where it's very thin and it's very um, bland I guess um, and from a distance it's very difficult to see so I instead uh, started using the hedges but for this little particular area you can see that the houses are quite close together and the hedges take up a much wider profile of space so that's why I stuck with the fencing over here or over there sorry and over here we've got those hedges which I just mentioned um, that I've been using you can see that they're quite a lot wider um, and they wouldn't actually work um, something in the center of town I'll show you once we go into live footage and that is I entered into or I, I uh, put in a, a water tower uh, which actually looks like an observation tower or something like that like an old ruined castle tower or something like that but um, it's an actual water tower asset uh, I think it's like from Berlin or something I don't know if it's real or anything but I thought, why not? It looks pretty cool. It gives the town a bit of a unique theme, a bit of a, a unique object in it. I like it. So I'll show you that in, in a second, guys. And something in addition also I wanted to add is I decided, you know what? Some of these people's lands are quite large, in, in, I mean, in, in regards to their property. So why not let them have like their own sort of homemade wineries? So that's what I started and did to a couple of these... Um, uh, properties and over here of course as well here's that me talking about all those little grass details the ruined grass different shades of grass uh, through all the decal mods that I've started adding in um, and at first yeah it looked really completely barren when the grass is all just one colored perfect shade and everywhere so um, that's where that started to come in real handy and uh, the results speak for themselves I must say um, yeah, really, really good. So a few swimming pools here and there. So this is what I could do with some additional suggestions of why I can just dump into people's backyards. Not that I would just dump it there, but <laughs> um, just some, you know, additional things would be good. 
The roads have got cracks and all that. Speed limits within the city center, which I'll show you in just a second, guys. So, um, yeah, as you can see, there's a few guardrails around uh, the highways. The highways have got signage added. Um, yeah, so that's the introduction to this time lapse. And just let this finish off, I think. Uh, yeah, I've got another 30 seconds. So, what more can I think of? So, yes, right. Once we just jump into this uh, live feed, uh, live feed, I'll show you exactly what is what that I'm going to be planning out, where things are going to be located, um, so that moving forward, uh, you guys will have some good ideas potentially that you can also offer for me to take into consideration uh, when developing either farmlands or uh, little towns where you think they will look quite unique and realistic. All right, so let's get into the live feed. And here we are guys. So this is Steinheim in the middle of the region of Eschternach where the capital city will be Eschternach. Um, so just zooming out an overview of where we are within the region. Um, so it's quite centralized, very close to the main lake. And I guess it's just downstream from uh, from the main lake. So what we have is Steinheim, Steinheim over here. We've got a couple of entry points into this into this town where we've got one coming from over here. So this is coming all the way from up from the mountains over there where Innsbruck is going to be. Um, and if we look over there, I don't know what's I haven't decided what's going to be coming from that direction, but that's where all the things will be coming from. So guys, I know I'm sure there will be some sort of comments happening, but I've already tested the simulation. This is just for the very beginning, so. As I've built the city, I have not actually initiated the simulation yet, hence why all this traffic is coming in, because I'm expecting about 10,000 residents in the city or in the town of Steinheim. So that will all clear out. There's no problems with that. Um, now, just to give you a little bit of an intro or an introduction into the Steinheim, as you can see, uh, there's quite a lot of detail provided over here. Here's that water tower, which looks a bit like a castle. So I really, really like that. I think it looks absolutely sensational. Um, city centre is littered with a nice large garden, a couple of car parks. We've got our little speed decals on the actual road attached as well. Oh, I forgot to... Uh, my little mod over here broke down, so I've got to just add a bit more concrete over here. I don't know why this was concreted before, but now it's not for whatever stupid reason, but it's done. Uh, so, in addition to that, we've got our high school around over here, our elementary school with the European themed. Uh, we've got our little smaller housing around the areas with some barbecue, swimming pool, as I mentioned, some uh, vine, uh, vineyards, or well, not vineyards, but like what, little homemade wineries, I guess. Um, it's got a fire service, a police service, ambulance service, all in the same kind of quadrant of this little town. Um, some little attention to detail that I also added was something that's in Europe is that, or in Germany at least, is these little city entrance signs. They've got these little yellow boards when you enter a city, which I look, think looks absolutely awesome. And on the other side, it's also yellow, it's difficult to see, but it's got a like red line through it. Actually, I've got another one on the other side over here uh, where it's got a little red line through it. There you go. Indicating that you're leaving city territory. So uh, I don't know if I can actually add a name onto these. It would be awesome if I could. Uh, but for now, that's good enough, I guess. Uh, if someone knows that if I can or not add actual text to those signs, then please let me know. I'd be very happy to find out. Um, so as you can see over here, I was explaining that I was adding a lot of the details into the grass and the cliffs. So here's a decal over the top of this um, uh, cliff face over here. So really adding that extra uh, extra depth of realism. I've got the little dirt, uh, a little tan bark also underneath the trees to make it kind of look more realistic. And I've got the little petals which kind of naturally growing in the terrain. I really like that. So you drive around, you can see all the attention to detail that's been added. So I really went above and beyond kind of 
um, to add all the detail as possible. Now over here we've also got the whole little pedestrian crossings and they've got the little um, little uh, yellow squ squares. Uh, so I guess I think that's like for people to be able to feel under the legs that they're entering an, an intersection or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Some additional details like school, cave clear, zone over here. I added some gutters on the road. That's an actual decal where you see that gutter right there. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely coming along. Uh, some thing I also wanted to add, oh, I love this over here. I added a little sign over here and this is all around the place. I got a little speed camera sign down over here. That's coming up. And then on top of that, over here, I've got like these little decals added, line, 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 and it gets more frequent until you get to this area over here where uh, it's got the like little capture zone. So I added a decal uh, with these little squares. They act as sensors in between these two uh, main lines. And the camera is right there facing towards that to capture all these people that are going to be speeding. Unfortunately, though, I don't get any revenue out of that. Damn it. Anyway, just for aesthetic's sake, it looks awesome, I reckon. Something as well is I added a guardrail on this side, so if anyone falls asleep in front of the wheel, they don't go crashing into the river. And on the other side, you can see we've got those little poles um, with little highlighters or reflectors on them. Every setup at every 20 meters odd to kind of make it look at least half decent. So that kind of goes through the entire thing, uh, the entire map. Over here, you can see they're on both sides. And even if we move to the other side over here, you'll see that these ref these little sticks with reflectors follow through over here as well, all the way down this path. Over here, I'm expecting to add some, uh, some farms as well. I've got another speed camera sensor area over here for people that are speeding. Another mod that I really, really like is the capability of adding these European German signs. And you can actually add the text in, which is absolutely awesome. So over here I've got a direction path. Yep, this is leading to Steinheim. And on the exit ramp over here I've got 300, 200, 100 meters, and then Ausfahrt, which is exit in German. Links to the exit. Um, I've got Eschternach to go forward, Steinheim to go, uh, to go right. And of course, this will probably get edited as more kind of towns get um, added and more directions that probably um, will be available through this exit ramp. But when you exit the ramp, you've got your, you know, end freeway signs and then you've come up to your whole, this is a roundabout coming up and then you've got your roundabout. Um, now, it's been all created with highway ramps, so there's quite decent speed limits on these roads because... Um, that's what they normally are, around 80 kilometers in, in parts of Germany like this, between towns, between 60 to 80 kilometers. So that's what I've decided to kind of incorporate. And it kind of makes people, uh, it gives the Sims more options than just driving on the freeways only. It still works as a pretty good town to town road. So over here, I've got future developments over here of having some uh, farmlands. Uh, and a little town called Kalkesbach over here. So this is not even probably going to have, going to have like a uh, centralized lo uh, centralized square like Steinheim has. It's just going to be little towns with even the housing joined up with farms or something like that. So I can just fill out this whole quadrant or this whole little section over here between the highway and, uh, and Steinheim. On top of that, over here, I've added uh, a nice classic old bridge, which kind of joins both sides. Um, and then it kind of joins up over here. I like this little detail where I make it go into the cliff, do a, do a hairpin turn and back to the roundabout, and you can go either left or right. So um, I'd just like to explain this little section over here. This section is really coming in kind of inspired from where I visited um, Steinheim and it was quite amazing because on this side of the road where this current road is uh, it's Luxembourg then we've got this like river I don't even know what it's called but we've got the river and on the other side it's Germany so it's like two countries just divided by the river it was quite quite um, surreal uh, 
unbelievable because you know in australia we don't have that sort of a thing where you know you can look across the river and wow that's a different country just like right there so that's kind of where this inspiration has kind of come from uh, especially this section i downloaded these little windmills over here as well which are kind of i think from belgium so they're slightly smaller size than the other ones um apparently they're more energy uh, not efficient but they generate more power than the standard ones I don't know what the deal is but they look cool they've got cool red markings on them I like them so I've added them in something that I've experienced also previously when I was in Germany oh god knows how many years ago but I really liked where they would have in like Bavaria they would have like the, all these uh, little mountains and in between mountains they would have all these lakes but these lakes would be like really really green it's not that like they they um they're unhealthy or they're polluted or anything but it's just the natural color of the lake is like a really deep green and you'd be driving on the side between the cliff on the side of the cliff and on the other side you've got the lake and it'd be look just like this and then you've got your guardrails on one side you've got your little s sticks with the highlighters or reflectors on the other and you're just driving and it just looks absolutely sensational and then you come up with views like that i mean that's just awesome. Now, in the time lapse before, I was actually asking you guys if you can, whoever can, this is where I would be using those um, chevron markers. Where you're coming up to this, there's a bend coming up, I'd put chevron markers on the outside over here showing that it's a right-hand corner to go this way. And then coming from this side, it's a left-hand corner. So if someone out there in the modding community is watching and you can do that, please, please do that because I would absolutely love you forever. Um, to have a red chevron with a, with a white arrow um, or directional arrow pointing left or right. Um, I think it's used in Austria, so I would absolutely appreciate that. Um, so what else? I guess for future plans, I've already talked about Kalkesbach over here. This is where I'm planning to have um, uh, Salfeld. So this is where Salfeld is going to be. I'm going to try and see if I can add a train station over here as well. I'll probably connect Salfeld to the freeway over here as well. And an idea is over here is going to be the main airport. So as I previously explained, the actual uh, city center of Esternach is going to be over here in this main block of land. And the airport is going to be over here. So with the new expansion coming out of mass transit, I'm going to try and join uh, a main train line that's going to go to Esternach. So something that I, that I can look forward to when the expansion comes out. Now in addition to that, over here you can see there's a wide, uh, a wide variety of connections. Over here you can see when we exit the airport, well, which will be the exit from the airport, we can go to Innsbruck, which is right, we can go to Saalfeld, which is straight, and Eschternach. So definitely every area or every intersection will have all these signs added. Something else that I'm adding is these little uh, speed limit signs everywhere and every exit has all the distance to exit and the exit itself. So it's all coming along really nicely. So let me know what you guys think. Um, before I sign off for this episode, I'd just like to mention that this episode is coming out this weekend. So I'm guessing you're gonna, you guys are going to be watching this maybe as of Saturday or Sunday. So this week I'm actually heading to Warsaw uh, for work. And whilst there, I will definitely be posting some um, photos of me taking, you know, inspirational photos of, you know, old architectural European buildings. Uh, so like the Facebook page, you can stay in touch with me over there. I'll be posting updates and photos so you guys can be in touch with me, uh, as well as in between episodes while I'm working on this. To give you a rough, a rough idea, this, in preparation for this episode, I probably did about 10 to 15 hours worth of recording and then chopping and changing to add this all into one uh, series or one episode. Um, just to really show you a lot of progress being made. And next episode, there'll be less of this describing at the end of the episode. Maybe a little bit of uh, construction work as well on finishing details and stuff like that. So that's it for now. Um, please remember to like, give me a thumbs up if you like this episode. Please give me some suggestions. Please, you know, as I mentioned, uh, 
any ideas moving forward, any mods that you reckon, um, anything that else that can help me make this series a little bit better. Uh, all criticism as well is more than welcome because criticism is always good as well because it helps me improve of what you guys think as well. So me, that's it. I guess I'm signing off. Till next time, take care guys. Bye-bye.